a closer look at China and South Africa relations. Jude Moore joins me. He is a senior policy fellow at the Center for Global Development. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Well, first of all, how significant is President Xi's visit to South Africa? He hasn't really traveled abroad as much or as far since the pandemic, but we have an in-person diplomatic state visit. Uh, this is very important. Again, thanks for having me. This is very important for South Africa, but also for the African continent. As you know, China, since 2009, surpassed the United States as, as Africa's largest trading partner. So his presence on the continent represents the strength of that relationship with South Africa as a country, but also with the continent of Africa in general. More importantly, South Africa, as your reporter noted, is the largest, uh, China is the largest trade partner for South Africa, and South Africa is China's largest partner on the continent. This, his presence there in, present, in person, is important for both parties. Well, tell us what you think both sides will try to accomplish uh, in the next few days. More, more importantly, we're going to see an expansion in economic relationships. So South Africa, uh, China already has significant investment there. Huawei is, is a big investor in the country, investing in training of South Africans there. So we're going to see that. But more importantly, the South African economy has struggled a bit. And so we're going to see probably memoranda concerning Chinese investment in South Africa. South Africa is looking to increase investment, especially in the energy sector, because the South African economy has suffered from um, blackouts. Um, they call them low shedding. So we're going to see more economic partnership between South Africa and, and China in, in those meetings. And Jude, I want to get your thoughts on a couple of big events coming up. President Xi will co-chair uh, the China-Africa Leaders Dialogue, as well as uh, the BRICS Summit here coming up. What are the expectations and the messages you think we'll see come, coming out of both of these events? So let's just talk BRICS for a minute. I, I think one of the things that you would notice is that BRICS, the, the countries that are part of BRICS are dissatisfied with uh, the international system and the architecture of global governance. They believe that their voices are not heard enough and BRICS is an opportunity for them to be able to increase both the economic and political heft when it comes to global governance. We're going to see that. In fact, at the BRICS summit, one of the issues will be discussed is the expansion of BRICS. All of the members are on board by adding, um, about adding more members. So countries like uh, Indonesia, UAE, Saudi Arabia are seeking to be added to BRICS. At that point, BRICS might be bigger in terms of both its population, which it is now, but also an economic heft than, say, the G7. Um, so that, that's the first thing. When it comes to the, the meeting with African leaders, you know, every three years, China hosts the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. So this is an extension of China's very, very extensive relationship with African governments and leaders. Anything else that you'll be looking for in the days ahead? Any signs that you'll be watching for? I think more importantly, I think the most important thing would be, you know, uh, how much more investment China is going to make in, in Africa. You see that, as I noted before, China is now the continent's largest trade partner. Even though the EU 27 combined is larger than China, but any single partner, China is larger. So the most, the, the, the thing we'll be watching for the most would be the extent of Chinese investment that will be accompanying the, um, President Xi's visit. All right, Jude Moore, great to see you. Thank you so much for your insight. Thanks, we, do, we do appreciate it. Thank you.